Hey everyone, it's Gildamem. Today I'd like to showcase to you one of the farming metas, specifically the Living World Season 4 Meta Train. The LS4 Meta Train goes through all the maps of the Living World Season 4 update, so you'll need to purchase the episodes from the gem store if you do not have them unlocked already. Please make sure to always log in during updates as you can get them for free. After the time of the update, you will then have to pay a gem store fee for them. This video will cover the summary of the LS4 Meta Train maps, the buffs and the consumables that you will need to maximize your farm, and finally, the gold per hour you can generate from this farm. The LS4 train typically consists of the following events that are done in each map. The order of the maps usually goes as follows. You will start in Domain of Istan, then you will head to Thunderhead Peaks Oil Meta, then you will head to Jahai Bluffs, after that you will go to Thunderhead Peaks North Meta, and after that you will end at Sandswept North Meta or South Meta depending on which one is done first. I'll explain this shortly. The LS4 meta train is typically done on four different schedules. These are run by the Overflow Community Guilds. If you'd like to join the Overflow Discord, there's a link in the description below. Join the largest trading Discord of the game and find the perfect guild for you. Now, we can start explaining each map and all the metas that you will do in each map. So, at XX 45 minutes, Usually the first meta will start. This is going to be in the Domain of Istan meta. To start this meta, you will first have to kill the gatekeepers. And once the gatekeepers are killed, the doors to Palaland will open. Then two bosses will spawn that love to spin you around and yeet you. Once you kill these two bosses, make sure you keep looting the chest as you go through the city. Each circle you conquer will spawn two chests. The first circle is immediately after the gate. The next circle is further down with the next boss. Once you finish looting and killing more mobs, you will then proceed to the next champion bosses. Each of these bosses spawns a chest once killed. You will then move to Joko's statue and destroy it. After you destroy the statue, you will then need to conquer the circles that spawn near the statue. After you finish that, you will then move into the bay. Once you move into the bay, the people with Skyscale can board the ship and kill the mobs there. The other players in the squad will make sure to get on the cannons to shoot the ship and clear the mobs around the cannons. Do not stand on the docks. If you stand on the docks, you die. So docks bad. Ship, cannons good. The commander will then head to fight Count Iburu. Kill the mobs around him because he can heal himself by draining their life because he is a sick, sick man. Once you kill Count Iburu, your next main event will be the Great Hall. If you manage to finish all the previous events in time, you can add in some filler events. These filler events can be either Achille, Pirates, Graveyard, or Smolge. After you've finished all these events, you'll want to re-rally on the Commander to get ready for the Great Hall event. Once the event starts, rally to the Commander and start DPSing the door, because Anet still wants you to remember that World vs World exists. Once you break into the Great Hall, you will then kill the mobs around the hall following the commander. Once you finish killing the mobs, bosses will spawn which you'll need to kill. Again, dodge in time or you will be yeeted by their tornado. Once you enter the Great Hall, you can then start looting the chests while killing more mobs. There's also chests located around the tent areas of the hall, so make sure you keep up with the train so you don't miss any chests. After you finish looting the chest, you will then move into the next map. The next part of the meta will be Thunderhead Oil Meta. Commanders will typically divide the squad into three subgroups for this meta. Each group must have the same number of people in their subgroup. The reason for this is there will be three drills that each group needs to defend. When the first drill starts, the commander in the second group will move to the second drill while the first subgroup stays to protect the first drill. You do this until all three subgroups are in each drill and once they're defended successfully, the next phase will spawn. This will start with three hydras that will spawn at the same time in each drill. Each subgroup must kill their hydra and then the next event will start shortly. This event will be collecting the oil spill that's filling out of the oils and refill the tanks in each drill. Because somebody wants the insurance. All subgroups must stay on their assigned drill until all these events are done. Once you fill the drills with all the oils again, the event will be completed and you will fight the final boss in the pit. Once the three drills are filled, 
the oil event will be completed and the boss will spawn in the pit. This is the main boss for this map. So you will then rally on the commander again and you will fight the boss in a pit. This pit will also be spilling a lot of oil because for some reason people don't care about oil in Guild Wars 2. So fight, kill the scary oily boss and then the event is over. We will then move to the next map. The next map is Jahai Bluffs. The meta of this map starts as you're killing the oil boss, so you will miss the first few minutes of this meta. As you load into Jahai Bluffs, you could start with the worms that spawn in the map. Completing the worms meta event will actually spawn the worms to fight the Shatterer with you and they do deal good DPS on the boss. Normally, you might want to skip this event as you want to be able to tag as many mobs as possible for more XP while you focus on killing the Shatterer in time, so it's usually best to skip this event. Once you kill the Shatterer, the Jin event at southeast part of the map will spawn. Waypoint to Yatandi village. Follow the Jin killing the mobs as you escort them to the large shiny crystal. You'll want to slow your DPS here so you can keep spawning more mobs as you attack the crystal for more XP. Incursions will be the next event. You look for real portals to kill Rift Stalkers. Big portals generally have a lot of lightning and mobs around them. You'll just keep killing these Rift Stalkers until you finish the event. Keep in mind, you may only have time to do either Jin or Incursions after Shatterer, before the Thunderhead North meta starts. Each commander usually has their own preferences, so it will just depend on your commander which event they'd like to do. The next map is Thunderhead North meta. You will then spawn in Thunderhead North Waypoint. You will wait behind a big door. Usually, you might have a few minutes to rest. Use this time to go get a snack, go to the bathroom, or if you still have time, Ecto Gamble. Once the event starts, mobs will spawn all over the place and your FPS will suddenly drop to below 10. The squad will go from right to left, killing all the mobs in the area. And once the event is over, the next event is ready to start. The next event is getting ready to defend the crystals. You can place mines and barricades before the event starts. Once the mobs spawn, just kill all the mobs in the area again and you'll be done. Once that is done, the main boss of this map will spawn. He's a big spiky boss and he's got a big booty and he'll spawn as the final boss of this event. You can use spears in this event to deal more damage to the boss. He will sometimes have a protection field around him that absorbs damage. So if you have spears, those will deal higher damage and negate that protection. Once the event is over, you will have time to mine the Dragon Crystal nodes in the map before swapping up to the next map. The next map is Sandswept Meta Islands. The island has two meta events, South and North Meta. Just like Thunderhead that has a North and an Oil Meta, Sandswept also has two meta events. The difference here, Sandswept Meta depends on which meta has been completed by the previous group that came in before you for this map. If you enter Sandswept Island and there is a South Meta timer going on, you will want to do the South Meta first, then the North Meta, and then if you have time, you can finish it up with bounties. If the timer is off, then you do the North Meta first, and if you still have enough time, you can do bounties, and then South Meta. The priority is always to go based on the timer in Sandswept Island. The timer always starts at 15 minutes, so you'll have to check which meta you'll have to do first. North Meta starts by completing the cluster event. They will spawn randomly around the map, but you could see them on your minimap. After completing the cluster event, the main meta for North will begin. You will waypoint back to North Waypoint and go kill three different tornadoes. Each tornado has three gins protecting it. You will need to kill the gins before killing the tornado. After that, you will waypoint back and an escort event will start. Follow the escort who chooses to use a skimmer on land for absolutely no reason at all and kill the mobs around that NPC. After you have done this, you have actually finished the north meta and you're ready to start the south meta. As again, south meta will start with a timer and this timer will always be 15 minutes when it starts. You will proceed to the chamber and you will kill mobs that spawn around the entrance of the chamber. Once the timer runs out, the chamber will open and the squad goes in. The chamber has six different bosses, and only two will actually spawn. These bosses are Thorn, Destroyer, Iron Frost, Subject Beta, Unchained, or Ugly Frog, and Branded. The 
before going into the chamber, take some bets with your squad on which two combinations of the bosses will spawn and see who wins the prize. At first, one boss will spawn, and once you kill the first boss, you will wait for the second one to spawn right after. Once you kill the second boss, you will then wait a couple more seconds and then both bosses will spawn again at the same time. There's usually no priority in killing any of these bosses, but if you do for some reason manage to get the Iron Frost, you'll want to kill that one first and then proceed to kill the second boss that's with it. Once that event is over, then you can finish up the event with some map bounties and then you can finish the train and relax. Now, the buffs that you will need and the consumables that you will need to make sure that you efficiently farm this train as best as possible. There are a couple consumables that I have linked their wiki description below for you to check out. These consumables include Omnum Berry Bar, Strawberry Ghost, Sharpening Skull, Lucky New Year Fireworks, and Lucky Guild Firework. The Omnum Berry Bar can give you 40% gold from monsters, plus 10% XP from kills, and 30% magic find. Strawberry Ghost can give you 10% magic find while under the effect of a boon and an extra 15% experience from kills. Now, you might have to decide which one of these you want because they do not stack with each other, but the time does stack. Each of these bars allows you to have 30 minutes, so make sure you eat up enough up to 3 hours or 2 hours because the train will take that long. Next, you have the Sharpening Skull. Make sure you use this, get another 10% XP from kills or 30% from magic find. It's up to you. The next thing you will need are the Lucky New Year Fireworks and the Lucky Guild Fireworks. Now, both of these can be stacked separately. All you have to do is consume a couple of them. I believe you need 24 of each Lucky New Year Firework or the Lucky Guild Firework. These fireworks, the Lucky New Year Firework, can stack plus 10% magic find, plus 5% bonus experience from kills, and it can stack up to a duration of up to 2 hours. Same thing with the Lucky Guild Firework, a duration of 2 hours, but it offers 10% magic find and 5% bonus experience from kills. You can stack both of these together and it will work perfectly fine. The next thing you will want is to purchase another buff, which you can purchase if you want from the guild hall. Go to the guild hall XP buff, which can be purchased from the bartender in the guild hall. That will add another 10% on your XP buffs. Make sure while you're stacking the fireworks that you are mounted so that you can skip the animation and save time. The next thing you will need are the gobblers. Make sure to have the candy corn gobbler, which can be used for karma, XP, Health per second, swiftness, and toughness. You will make sure to want the XP one, so just keep clicking on the gobbler until you get the XP bar. You can then use the Snowflake Gobbler or the Zytafi Gobbler. Keep in mind that both the Snowflake and Zytafi can stack with the Candy Corn Gobbler, but they cannot be stacked together. So you will have to choose. They both give the same buff essentially, but you can use the Candy Cane gobbler in WW or pgp to give you the xp slash karma buffs and avoid spending more corns now the next thing you'll need are enrichments enrichments can be found in the laurel merchant in la under ascended tab the second one enrichments that you want to buy will be the xp and the magic the next thing you'll need are the upgrades when starting out, you need to focus on leveling your Karma and XP Retributions to level 2 at least in each of the maps that you are in for the LS4 train. They can be purchased from the vendors in each of the maps. You just go to one of the Volatile Magic Collectors and ask for their wares. These maps are the best ones you will want to focus when you are purchasing the Karma and XP Retributions. Domain of Istan, the High Bluffs, and Sandswept Meta. You'll want to focus on these maps specifically, as these maps usually offer the most value for your train. The high bluffs, you can get level 1 of each Karma or XP just by finishing the story. Once you have these upgrades at level 2, you can then start focusing on either upgrading the rest, or you could just start buying the trophy shipment boxes from your volatile magic. Now that we've covered the train and the buffs and consumables that you will need for the train, let's talk about the gold per hour. 
The gold per hour for the LS4 Meta Train will vary based on the economy. The gold per hour could go anywhere from 30 gold to 4 gold per hour. This is all dependent on supply and demand. So if you'd like a more accurate sampling, make sure you record all your data as you keep going and keep storing the data and comparing it as you have a larger sample size to then assess and analyze. The following is an example of the gold per hour you can make from the LS4 Meta Train. I used one of my friend's sheets to show you what it looks like. You can also go to Pew's website and check out some other spreadsheets that will show you the LS4 Meta Train volatile magic currencies and what you could spend them on. Most likely you'll want to spend them on the trophy shipment boxes as these are the ones that will give you the most value for your money. On his website, he also has a page called Living Story Currency Guide. This can show you exactly where to find all the chests and the nodes in each map. If you'd like more details on the website, there's a link in the description below. With that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly all you need to know about farming the LS4 Meta Train. If you'd like to join the Overflow Discord and be a part of these trains, the description again is below. If you'd like to join our community, you can join the Overflow Discord below, the largest trading community of the game, and offering a variety of farming trains besides the LS4 Meta Train. Please leave a like and your comment in the description below if you have any questions and if you just enjoyed this video you want to hit that subscribe button so we can try and get more content out that is our video for today i hope everybody enjoyed and i hope to keep pushing out more content like this in the future thank you for the support and i'll see you guys when i see you